Hello, my name is Rocco Beatrice. I'm the Managing Director for Estate Street Partners. Today I want to talk about fraudulent conveyance. Uh, it is one of the biggest issues when you're moving assets from one place to the other without receiving adequate consideration. I see trust documents. A trust is nothing more than a contract. Anybody can write a contract, but here's the problem. How do you move assets from you to the trust without raising the issue of fraudulent conveyance? Now, exactly what is fraudulent conveyance? Well, let's say that you have a Mercedes Benz. You just bought it six months ago for $70,000. And something is coming down the pike. You think you're going to be sued. So you give title of your Mercedes Benz to your brother for $10,000. So now your brother owns a Mercedes Benz and has a value of $70,000. And you just gave it to him for $10,000. Well, that's fraudulent conveyance. You just defrauded a potential creditor out of 70000 less than 10000 that you received, so $60,000. So the clue here is you gave up seventy, you received ten, you defrauded sixty. But what if your brother paid you 70000 Well, you gave him something that was worth seventy. you received back seventy. there's no fraudulent conveyance. That's what fraudulent conveyance is all about. Equal value for equal value. So when you move, for example, your house, both you and your wife own, let's say it's worth $300,000, okay? And there's no mortgage on it, $300,000. So it's owned by husband and wife. Each of you own $150,000 in the house. So how do we transfer $300,000 to the trust that's money that would have been available in a lawsuit to a potential creditor. Well, you, if you transfer it five years before, well, nobody's going to challenge it because the statute of limitations on those kinds of transfers, usually in almost every state, is five years. So if five years go by, nobody's going to bring up the issue that you intentionally uh, trying to defraud a potential creditor. Now, if you receive, in the same example of the car, you give away 70, you receive 70 back, there's no fraudulent conveyance. So the house is worth 300,000, you're going to be receiving something back that's worth 300,000. And that can take many shapes and forms. But most attorneys don't deal with that. They simply transfer the property from husband and wife to a trust, unwittingly not recognizing the fact that they just committed fraud. And they triggered an income tax. It's a gift tax. If I give you 100000 is it a gift? Yes, it is. Do I have to file a gift tax return? Yes, I do. Is it a taxable gift? Well, the only way you can determine that is Form 709, what you gave before, what's available now, and what the law is. Right now, you can give away $5 million. A couple of years ago, it was only a million. And is that going to change again? Yes, it is. So the problem is keeping up with the laws, but you don't have to. If you have a fair exchange, and this is where the ultra trust makes a big, huge difference, when we exchange exchange the asset for equal value, we don't have fraudulent conveyance. Now, what you want to be able to do in a lawsuit or an estate tax or when you go through probate is the ability to say, I don't own any asset. Okay? That is the key ingredient. If you don't own it, then you're not subject to an estate tax, a gift tax, probate, or a lawsuit. Because there's nothing to execute a judgment against an asset that is owned by a fiduciary 
the key element is the fiduciary has to be independent. It cannot be you, cannot be any blood relative, or it can't be your wife. So it has to be a totally independent person. Fraudulent conveyance. For this and other subject matters, please visit ultratrust.com.